Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we call the meeting to order, we always ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. The bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. Call the 15th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Excuse. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. Alderman mm. Boren, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> minutes are approved. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's two of them. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Mark Zafus to be considered for appointment to Group Health Insurance Committee as the employee representative for Mead Public Library with a term expiring 430-08, signed by the mayor. Need a motion to confirm. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to confirm the appointment. Second. Motion and second to confirm. Under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would like to um, uh, address the resignation of um, Ernest, or maybe most of us know him as Mike Kepler, he had knee surgery, and um, and it has uh, made it a little bit more difficult. I served with him on this uh, on on a uh, capital improvements commission, and uh, and uh, his uh, absence from the city on committees because of his illness will be uh, sorely missed. Mm -hmm. And that pertains to the next appointment confirmation. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Oh, sorry. One minute. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Dave, clean. David Gass to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Ernest M. Kepler, whose term expires 4-30-11. Signed by the Mayor. And I need a motion to confirm. Motion, motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second. And those nice uh, words that Alderman Gisha said apply to Mr. Kepler in this case. This is where Mr. Kepler is being replaced. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Confir uh, appointment is confirmed. Next item on the agenda is we have a proclamation for Mr. Mr. Luis Urbina. Would he please uh, come forward? Mr. Uh, Urbina, Mr. Luis Urbina is the, uh, the founder and the, uh, the trainer, and you could say director for the local boxing club. Mr. Urbina has done just an incredible amount of good, not only to the community in putting back uh, Sheboygan on the map in terms of boxing, but also in helping uh, a lot of children, a lot of youth that, uh, that uh, have benefited from the discipline that he teaches uh, through the art of boxing. Uh, he's just been an outstanding citizen for the city of Sheboygan, and I wanted to, to recognize him today. Proclamation, whereas Luis Urbina is dedicated to serving the youth of Sheboygan County, and whereas Luis Urbina organized the Sheboygan Boxing Club in 1999 with, with his own garage serving as a gym, and whereas in 2001 he used his own money to purchase equipment and rent space for a gym in what is known as the EPCO Building, and whereas Luis is more than qualified to act as a coach and trainer for the boxing club, as he enjoyed a very successful amateur boxing career that included not less than 186 bouts, whereas Luis has won eight Golden Glove tournaments and a national title, 
And whereas in addition to being a volunteer coach and trainer for the boxing club, Luis' employment is a, as a trainer mentor for youth at risk within Sheboygan County. And whereas Luis and his wife, Gail, serve as foster parents to children with disabilities and have given well over 50 children a temporary home. Now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, by the power vested in me, do extend my personal thanks to Luis Urbina for all his contributions to the youth of our community and in making Sheboygan County a destination for amateur boxing. Mr. Urbina, thank you for all the good work you do. I'd like to say uh, good evening, everyone. I just got a couple of people that I need to thank. Thank, you know, thanks for making this happen. I got Dave Michael, Larry Samet, Doug Cook. Thank you. Uh, from the Paul, uh, the Fieldhouse at Triple Play, uh, Paul Wagner and Charlie Rasky, Dr. Curtis um, Hancock for his help at the commission, um, Dave Lubach, the Sheboygan Press, uh, Joel Stefan from the Beacon, and the Plymouth Review. Harry uh, Crosser, City TV Channel 8, and Doran Boo, since he's uh, the state champion, uh, 2007 champion, and also uh, 2007 Golden Glove champion, and right now he's competing with the top opponents at the nation right now. Okay, so Dorn Boo comes from the Sheboygan Boxing Club area. Thank you all. The next item... Next item on the agenda is a presentation of certificates of recognition to Department of Public Works employees Niels Sprangers and the Bear Billman. Are they here? Okay. Please come in. Could be wrong. They, see now, now I can see here. They, this, this, uh, this recognition here. Uh, again, we we talk about Mr. Luis Urbina having just a wonderful heart and wanting to help out uh, in the community, do things that are really great. In Sheboygan, we have a lot of good, kind, giving people. Uh, they give in, in all, all forms. In this case, we had two city employees who gave, just by the nature of their good heart, assistance that was critical at, at that time. Uh, and this uh, certificate of recognition is presented to Bear Billman in recognition of coming to the aid of Angelina Dockery, who broke and sprained her ankle while, while playing with two small children at Romer Park on October 24, 2007. While spreading wood chips with fellow employee Neil Sprangers, you assisted in transporting her to, for medical attention and watching her children until a neighbor could arrive. Ms. Doctory, Do Doctory was most grateful because both her husband and father-in-law were out of town and had no one to call. Because of your compassion response, you became family for this thankful, very thankful citizen. I commend you for your efforts and issue this certificate of recognition. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. It was two of them that did the, the, did the, uh, the volunteer work for this lady, and this one's presented to Neil Sprangers. In recognition of coming to the aid of Angelina, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing this last name correctly, Dr. who broke and sprained her ankle while playing with two small children at Rummer Park on October 24, 2007. While spreading wood chips with fellow employee Bear Billman, you assisted in transporting her to medical attention and watching her children until a neighbor could arrive. Ms. Dockery was most grateful because her husband and father-in-law were out of town and had no one to call. And because of this compassion, you also became family to this very thankful citizen. I commend you in your efforts and recognition.
They don't want to say anything. So. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're proud of having you as employees. It's an issue for you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the election of Board of Water Works Commissioners, President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than one, <clears throat> more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the <clears throat> lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and the balloting continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Are there any non are there any nominations? Do you want me to, do I need to formally nominate these two gentlemen? Okay. Okay. Uh, Art Stewart and Mark Hines uh, both have submitted their resumes and letters of interest to us. So I would make a motion uh, to nominate each of them. Second. Motion and second to uh, nominate uh, Mr. Art Stewart and Mark Hines as candidates for the off for the position or office of elected board of waterworks commissioner. There was a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We will proceed with the election. Alderman will be handing out ballots. This is an open ballot. There's a space here for you to sign, and then there's a space below for you to print which person you would like to have as the new commissioner. It would either be Art Stewart, and you have these names on your desk, or it would be Mark Hines. So please print the name of the person you are voting for on here. The uh, candidates, uh, Mr. Stewart and Mr. Hines, uh, would any of you like to uh, address the council? No, it's one open seat. Only one is here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then let's proceed with the election then. Thank you.
you. Alderman, you have elected as a new water, uh, water commissioner, Art Stewart. Congratulations to Mr. Stewart. <laughs> Okay. We will proceed with the agenda. Next item is public forum. Okay. Um, Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. Okay, you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'm here to discuss the necessity to have open and transparent government. Several months ago, I had the opportunity to meet with several aldermen to discuss the benefits and perceived disadvantages of open government and the free flow of information to the residents of the city of Sheboygan. Why is it so important for individuals within a community to have as much information about their elected officials, what their elected officials are doing as it pertains to raising taxes, giving tax breaks to developers, undertaking new services that will commit additional tax revenue, and selling or giving away of city property? The answer to the question is the building of constituents' trust as it pertains to their elected officials. In the latest poll, the president's favorability rating is 33%. The congressional favorability rating is 36%. According to these figures, it seems that the general public is somewhat dissatisfied with, the, with how things of the two entities are conducting their business. My observation on the openness and transparency of City of Sheboygan government is that it seems to pick and choose when it wants to be open and readily disseminate information to the general public on pending issues. For example, when the Walgreens wanted when Walgreens wanted to build a new store on North Avenue and Calumet Drive, the city was quite willing to listen to the residents to find in the area to find out how they felt about the construction of the Walgreens store. I remember reading various articles in the Sheboygan Press that the City Planning Commission held several public meetings to ascertain the wishes of the residents of the area. In fact, Walgreens had to make various revisions to their initial plan in order for the Planning Commission to approve the building of the Walgreens store. It is, just, is it just a coincidence that the new construction projects require the City Planning Commission to hold public hearings before any plans can be approved through the City of Sheboygan? Another example of just the opposite was the City of Sheboygan approving the City of Sheboygan Fire Department to take over the ambulance service for the City of Sheboygan and thereby committing hundreds of thousands of tax dollars for future spending. If I recall, the poll that was conducted by the Sheboygan Press showed an overwhelming opposition to the city taking over the ambulance service. Why was this issue treated so different than the building of the Walgreens store as it pertains to public input? Could it be that the city was required to hold specific public hearings for the building of the Walgreens store? Could it be the requirement of the city to hold public hearings that garnered the concerns of the neighborhood residents? I truly believe that what was, that was the deciding factor on permitting public input. My recommend, recommendation to the aldermen that I met with and previously was as specifically to require the city of Sheboygan to hold public hearings as it pertains to the city of Sheboygan raising taxes, giving excessive tax breaks to developers, undertaking new services that will commit large additional tax revenue, dramatically reducing specific tax, specific city department budgets in a manner that will adversely affect the public safety and well-being of the residents of the city of Sheboygan and selling or giving away city property. Even by holding public hearings, that would still not obligate the city to do what the residents of the city are expressing if it feels that their actions are for the better good of the community. One of the things that the public hearings would accomplish would be that the city would have to make a substantial argument to the residents of, the, of Sheboygan to support their particular stand on specific controversial issues. By doing so, the city would be obligated to disclose information on specific items that they wanted to act on as it pertains to the aforementioned items. For example, 
To show the lack of public disclosure, here are some of the issues that have occurred during the initial construction of the police department building. I found out that the city of Sheboygan asked the county for the granting of an easement for an adjacent land so that the city could construct the proposed communication tower. It is my understanding that the county was not willing to allow the easement and told the city that they would have to buy additional adjacent county land for the construction of the communication tower in the location that the city wanted. I believe that the city has purchased or is going to purchase the additional land. This information was obtained through an open records request to the county. It is also my understanding that the city asked the county to access some of the utility infrastructure during the initial construction of the police department building and the county denied the city's request. That is why the Superior Avenue construction occurred. It is also my understanding that city asked the county to allow the city to have access to their highway department entrance so they could have additional access to the police department building. Excuse me, but, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes, okay, go ahead. but the county denied the city's request. You may say, well, these are just small issues that really do not seriously affect the construction of the building, the police department building. Yes, you may be right, but what it does show is that the relationship between the city and the county may be strained. Is it not hard to understand why the county was not willing to grant the city's request when they had to find out that the city was going to be taking over the ambulance service and thereby putting the county in a somewhat delicate situation since they are responsible for the remainder of the county residents and they were made aware of this through the media as the general public. How hard would it have been for the mayor and the council president to meet with the county administrator and the county board chairman to inform them on the issue of the city taking over the ambulance service? This should have been done just out of professional courtesy to the county and their elected officials. Not only should city residents be made aware of such important issues, but other entities that are going to be affected should also be informed. By being more open with controversial issues. Excuse me, Henry. That the minute is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Mr. Capetillo, for addressing the council. Next item on the uh, agenda is Mayor's comments. Just wanted to share some brief thoughts with you uh, with respect to the budget and the Taylor Heights uh, study that we're presently working on. The budget uh, continues to be a, a very difficult one. Uh, we, we felt that the when the Finance Committee met in special session, the issue of uh, balancing the budget and coming up with a, with a fairly good budget uh, was, was over. Uh, apparently, it's not. Uh, we have uh, found out from the state that the uh, the revenue that we were expecting from the assessments on manufacturing uh, actually went down to the tune of about $330,000 approximately. That is revenue that uh, we were ex uh, expecting, and quite frankly, uh, an assumption was made that we would get that revenue, and this is how we put our budget together. Uh, we're not in this, we're not unique to that. A lot of cities had done the same thing. They had budgeted what they had been getting before. Some of them found out just like we did uh, Thursday, late Thursday or Friday morning, that folks, you're not getting that money. Uh, the uh, assessments went down. So the the, the matter with the budget, uh, I will have to to handle that. We're 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 looking at some options uh, to to come up with an additional three hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars. For to, to, in order to keep the budget where it was at and in order to have six additional police officers and a captain of CID and in order to have uh, the, uh, the, the same level of service. Now, it, every department, I believe, maybe one or two may have cut a little bit, but the major departments, uh, public works, I believe they went up to about 10%. Their budget went up from last year. Police went up. Fire, uh, fire department, their budgets went up. So you're not cutting... Uh, at, at the core of what people perceive to be incredibly uh, important to Sheboygan. Uh, to the contrary, you've been very responsive to the people of Sheboygan when they've, when they've asked for more police presence out in the community. You've been very responsive to that, uh, to that plea, and uh, I, I commend you for that. When we are responsive to issues like that that cost money, my job and the finance department to try to find out where that money is going to come 
Luckily, I've had some very good assistance from the Finance uh, Committee this year. Uh, you've done uh, remarkably well in helping me out. I appreciate uh, all of you, all of them doing that. The budget is not done yet. That's the bottom line. So we will have to make some changes somewhere in between here and November 26. The week before November 26, there is a, a special meeting of the council to have a public hearing. And then on the, on the on the November 26th is when you actually approve the budget, and there will be a special uh, hearing for that too. If people would uh, like to address the council, then if any of you have any questions regarding uh, the uh, the situation as it says now, and you need further information, feel free to call me, and uh, we'll be glad to sit down with you and talk to you. The other issue is the Taylor Heights study. As you know, uh, Walmart moved from the Taylor Heights uh, shopping center, so to speak. Uh, after that, different businesses have been moving out. The area is in dire need of help. Uh, we have not been ignoring that. We have not been uh, just letting it go by and not doing anything about it. We, Paulette Andrews, uh, through city development, and myself have been, have been thinking about that quite a bit. And you, uh, the council, approve a bid for a consultant to work with us to see what we can do to uh, to help that area develop. It, it's, it's, they're going to look at an array of things: traffic, lights, lighting, uh, maybe even re reconfiguring entrances and exits, and how do we put the right mix together there of, of all the businesses that could uh, conceivably come there? How do we create that right mix there, and at the same time? create the right mix that dovetails with uh, what's already at the mall because the mall, uh, just being in close proximity to that area, plays a huge part uh, in that. So if the mall uh, starts to decline, that area will too. The traffic, the volume is not there. The bottom line is, uh, Alderman, we are working on it. Uh, Paulette has put together an, an administrative team. We'll be looking at that. There will be public hearings on that too, uh, just as there always are. When we do uh, critical issues like this, when we deal with critical issues, there will be public hearings. There will be a stakeholder input, what's referred to stakeholder input. The people who live there in the neighborhood will have ample opportunity and time uh, to uh, express their concerns uh, to us. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. I will keep you posted uh, as to how the situation develops. And again, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to call me. Okay? Thank you very much. We have a question, Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just before we move on, I wanted to uh, make a, a statement about this Sunday being Veterans Day. Uh, the last time I spoke, it was Memorial Day, and that holiday is specifically for uh, veterans who have given their lives in the service of the country. This Sunday, Veterans Day, originally was about uh, celebrating the end of World War I and has now become, uh, you know, celebrating all veterans. So I know that Alderman Heideman and Alderman Ryan are former veterans, and I just want to take this moment to uh, make sure the people out in TV land know that Sheboygan appreciates its veterans, and this weekend is the weekend to say so. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Alderman Bulk. Very well put. Next item on the agenda is a hearing to rezone property located at 2404 North Avenue from Class SR5 Suburban Residential 5 to Class Urban Commercial Classification. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion is second to close hearing. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. On item number 15-7, uh, Public Works recommending filing a document regarding Ken Herman has difficulty with uh, crossing the streets in Washington. Is there anything that you can give me? I know it's been met with and it's been um, also held on on table for a while. I'd like to know any resolution for it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clayness. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yes, um, this issue has been addressed. Um, it was addressed in public works and in public protection and safety. And they have worked on fixing the, um, the button so that it's lower so this gentleman can touch it. He's in a wheelchair. And um, I believe the issue has been taken care of. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Clayness. <clears throat> 
Thank you. Anything else? Under discussion, consent agenda. There being no more discussion, please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 15, 20, and 21 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1522 by the city clerk submitting a petition from various people in the surrounding area of North Avenue and Calumet Drive and other parts of the city stating that they support the Walgreens development of, at North Avenue and Calumet Drive and ask that the council approve the project. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second under discussion. President Hanna. Yeah. I'd just like to thank all the the citizens for taking time out of their schedules to express their concerns. Um, also, like to thank the folks at at Walgreens for working so hard to to come up with a compromise and acceptable development. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Bauck, did you wish to speak? I was just going to do that. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Being none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1523 by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating a portion of North 24th Street north of North Avenue. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clyunis. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Verhasselt, Wangaman, and Boren. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1524 by City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of property located at 2404 North Avenue from Class SR5 Suburban Residential 5 to Class Urban Commercial Classification and passing the substitute ordinance. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clyunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1525, we will hold for 1526, I mean 1546. Hold 1525 for 1546. 1526 lies over to November 26. 1527 through 1545 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1546 by Alderman Bauk and Ryan authorizing entry into contract for obtaining EMS billing and collection services for the fire department. And we will take 1525 along with that. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, we suspend the rules uh, with regard to 1525 and 1526. Motion second to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? There is none. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would move to accept and place 1525 on file and to put 1546 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. If there is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. <clears throat> excuse me. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1547 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, and Gisha authorizing entry into an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Kmart regarding the payment of unpaid personal property taxes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Attorney McLean. Yes, I would suggest that there be suspension of the rules. I think this is just coming in for the first time. Suspension? And it's regarding an expenditure. Of I request that we suspend the rules. Second. Motion second to spend. Any objection? 
There is none. Then the motion to put the resolution upon his passage stands. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1548 and 49 lies over. 1550 and 1551 lies over to November 26. 1552 and 1555 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1556 by Public Works. Recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Family Resource Centers of Sheboygan County Incorporation Incorporated requesting an extension of their present lease and approving a six month extension to the lease. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1557 by finance, recommending filing documents submitting an agreement from Kmart and certain of its subsidiaries and aff affiliates regarding 2001 and 2002 personal property taxes. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of Committees 7, 1558 by Finance, recommending endor endorsing the Early Retirement Incentive Program with the caveat that the departments involved with the Early Retirement Incentive Program will repay over five years principal and interest to the Special Assessment Fund. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, as a clarification, the last sentence, it reads, City Departments, comma, Police, Fire, Streets, and Sanitation, Cemetery, and Park. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, it should be, the intent is that it's the following City Departments, Police, Fire, Streets, and Sanitation, Cemetery, and Park, and not all City Departments. Is that the understanding of the committee? Okay. Any other questions? There be no more. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1559 by finance recommended filing RC number 226. 0708 by Public Protection and Safety, who met and reviewed the recommended 2008 budgets of the Police Department and the Fire Department. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I would make a motion that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. For Hasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1560. Alderman Hannah, do you want to hold that? Or do you want to? 1560 actually we can file. Okay. President Hannah. Oh, Alderman, Alderman Boren. Vice President Boren. Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I need a clarification on this from uh, City Attorney. Uh, 1560 came before the last Finance Committee meeting, and it came to the Council tonight without recommendation uh, because there was three of us at Finance. Uh, it was a tie vote between Alderman Gisha and myself, and Alderman Hanna abstained. Uh, I see no reason why we should call another Council meeting to address this because at the Finance Committee meeting, both of the proposals for the health insurance were on the table and it came forward with no recommendation. Uh, if we call a special council meeting, uh, we're going to have the same two plans on the table again that came forward with no recommendation. 
I see no reason why we can't go ahead and discuss this tonight. Uh, there's there's going to be no additional information if we call out another council meeting later this week. We already have the information, and I think most of the older persons have had a chance to, to study the issue and discuss it tonight. Are you, uh, Vice President Barton, were you referring to possibly having action on that? About having action on that tonight, yes. It was, uh, we dealt with, if, if I'm thinking what you're thinking, we dealt with that it's a procedural matter. There's no document other than that. And the document for the council is that there was no recommendation. There is no resolution attached to that before council acts on any on anything. It, there has to be a document. In this case, the only document here is that the finance committee made no recommendations. So as a report of committee, that's all you can act that on. If, you, if we are to act on any issue that deals with numbers or money and, and, and things of that nature, there has to be a document. Yep. So that's where the special meeting would come in. It's procedural. Attorney McLean? Your Honor, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Alderman Bourne, that would be my opinion also. There's, there should be some document here, some resolution or something to act on other than just a committee report that's making no recommendation. Uh, I think if there had been a resolution somewhere in the council packet here to act on one plan or another, uh, I think you could act tonight. But because there's no nothing before you for action by way of, say, a resolution, uh, I don't really think you, it's appropriate to take any action on something that's not before you. In, in the uh, future, you may want to uh Vote to make no recommendation, but pass the document forward to the council for action. And it was just that little piece that wasn't put in there. Make a motion not to take any action, but we'd send this council this document to the council for action. So that may be. Uh, Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Isn't that the document, the no recommendation? Isn't that that not the document itself? I mean, there has to have been instances in recent years where documents have come back with no recommendations where there have been stalemates. As long as the document is attached to it, no recommendation, but the document gets forwarded to the council for action. Could you clarify then on documents that are pulled from committee where, again, there would be no action taken, no recommendation from a committee, which happened not that long ago, uh, yet we acted on the document. But there's a document before the council. Right. In that case, I think there was a resolution that was in committee that pulled, pulled out of committee, uh, and so you had something to act on. Here, you've just got a committee report, and I, I think, uh, I don't know what the plan is or what the, uh, the recommendation even of the group health insurance committee formally is. It's not spelled out. There should be some resolution that the council has in front of it to act on, so it's clear what plan it is you're you're acting on. Okay, I, I apologize, but the RC in front of us here is number two thirty one oh seven oh eight, and if, even though it's not stapled or copied to the back of this document, we we vote on reports of committee all the time, and the report of this committee is that there is no recommendation. So it seems like we're maybe splitting hairs here. Well, Doesn't quite worry. follow for me, I guess, looking at past precedent with similar situations. <coughs> we, is not the report of the committee that there is no recommendation? That is the report? That's the report. And we, votes on, we vote on reports of committee all the time. So, the, 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 well, you, you, I guess you could accept the report of the committee that there's no recommendation. You could do that, but that's not action on a health insurance plan. Why is the document not attached then, I guess? Let me ask the obvious question. Because the Finance Committee made a, made, a, uh, made a motion not to make any recommendation. They did not say we make a motion not to re make a recommendation and forward this document before us to council for approval before the full body. So what's the... Can I, that was our intention. But it wasn't. It was, it's not what's on that, res on that report of committee. So what... What is the future of this document then? If it goes, if it's in committee with no recommendation, how that's it. That's it. That's all it is. A report of committee is what committee did or did not do. In this case, what they did is they made no recommendation, and it comes to us as a committee report that the finance committee made no recommendation. 
but it did not include in that motion that although it's not making a recommendation, we're still forwarding the document before us to the council for full action. That's all I think. Uh, Madam City Clerk? Um, maybe just to clarify a little, I think the confusing part is this document is an RC, which is just a report of committee. In order for the council to take action, the action document would have been a resolution. The resolution has to be drafted with the actual plan. There is no resolution with the actual plan. That's why an RC is just a report of committee. The resolution is an action document for council. The council has to draft an act, or action document. That's what's missing. It's confusing to a lot of people, Alderman. Yes, Alderman Rehassel. Was that the intent of the committee then, that it proceed in this fashion? That it come out in this way? Can I ask the chair, was that the intent of, or was this just a snafu, a paperwork snafu that we're experiencing? President, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The intention of the committee uh, was because we were split, I had to abstain because of my wife's employment. Because of that, our intention was to push it forward to the full common council for them to act on it. So uh, all the person for Haslett is quite correct. Our intention all along was to have action tonight. But that wasn't part of what the, was right. moved in second and voted on. What you voted on was not to take any action. Mm -hmm. to, and it, it's confusing to a lot of people, but that's, that's procedural. Your Honor, if I could. Mr. Just, Sergeant McLean. One further thing, I would suggest if we're gonna have a special meeting that a resolution be drafted by someone uh, expressing whatever intent you want uh, and have that submitted to the clerk so that that get on the agenda so that uh, I think it's important on a major change on a health plan that it be done by resolution so it's clear that what the plan is and that the council is acting on that plan. Okay. Well, we have one more. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. So how, what would that document look like since there was no, there was nothing resolved that evening. There was no uh, arrival at a decision. What would be forwarded? I'll, 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 uh, President Hanna, as chairman, can put together what his intent was to, uh, in the form of a document, a resolution brought before the council for action, which will be properly posted. Or Alderman Gish. Oh, that's right, Alderman, Alderman Gish. Just to follow on, Your Honor. Please continue. But but the committee, we have option A and option B, and we were unable to arrive at a decision on which one to recommend to the council. Mm -hmm. So then by doing that, yeah. both come to the council and we discuss it here. Sure. Very good. Thank you. Alderman And maybe this is procedure. Thank you, Your Honor. Maybe this is procedural as well. Would it be appropriate, and may I ask uh, Chairman Hanna of the Finance Committee, that perhaps we call, if there's going to be a special council meeting, why not call a special finance meeting? and uh, actually have more than just the three of us there and uh, perhaps hash this out to get a recommendation, yay or nay, out of that finance committee meeting to give some clarification to the issue once it hits this floor. You can, uh, you'll have time to call a special meeting of the finance committee for Wednesday. I would, could already post a special meeting of the common council for Thursday, or it, it could be, and, and we can have that document there. You can't do both on Wednesday. We do both. Sure. Sure. Again. sure. We can do both on one. Alderman Gish, did you wish to further discussion? Um, just that, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just that I think it was just Alderperson Hander, Alderperson Bourne, and myself with Alderperson and Chairman Hannah having to abstain. We have some very valuable members that I respect input from uh, all the members of our, our committee. And I, I think if we're even sending it as a no recommendation, it would be nice if it was a lo more recommendation, uh, no recommendation of all of us for, on such an important issue versus just uh, the bare minimum. Okay. I would just urge that be called that way. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With that, I would like to uh, make a motion to refer this document back to the Finance Committee. Second. Motion and second to refer 1560 back to the Finance Committee, preferably in a special meeting. Was there a second to that motion? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants the credit? Under discussion, we have Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, I think with the document in hand, the report of committee saying simply in committee we spoke and had no decision, this can be filed. The issue is still in the committee as long as it's uh, posted that it's going to be discussed in the finance committee. 
all we're doing is at this point would be sending back a document saying that they had no recommendation, which they're already fully aware of. So I think actually we can go ahead and just file this document because the issue is still at hand within the committee and they still have access to, po to post that and create a resolution to come back to council. So That's what we were trying to do. <laughs> Alderman Ryan. In that case, Your Honor, I will withdraw my motion and make a motion to file to get this over with this evening. Second. Motion and second. I think, that, well, there was already a motion on the floor to file, wasn't there? No, that was a motion to file. <laughs> okay. <laughs> motion and second for, to file 1560. I'm going to turn off all the lights uh, under discussion on the motion 1560 to file. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Then I just need to, this is just procedural. And, and, and are we allowed, we still need to abstain? Those of us who need to abstain should still abstain, even if it's a procedural. I, no, I, I, no, to yeah. file this document, I don't think requires any abstention if you have any conflicts. Thank you. Gentleman Kittleson. Okay, we, uh, there's a motion to file 1560. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. One nay. 1561 through 1564 lies over to November 26. Report of committees. 1565 uh, lies over. 1566. Good question. Um, they may want to know why you're lying oh. over that one. This is the uh, the trust funds where where you were moving some money to pay for the uh, for the uh, uh, we borrowed some money to pay for the trust fund to pay towards the trust fund. Uh, there may be a, a, a better alternative, a f better fiscal alternative, and we want to have some opportunity to review that uh, other alternative. Uh, we'll bring that back at next meeting. Two weeks is, yep. is plenty to, to look at the options and then bring it back uh, next council meeting. Did you wish to speak, President Hannah? No? That's exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Uh, 1566 by finance recommended entry into contract for the purchase of program and services for the city assessor's office. President Hanna. Okay, I would make a motion that the <clears throat> sorry that the RC uh, be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt and put that resolution upon its passage. And put the resolution upon its passage. And the second's okay with that. Okay, 1566. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? 14 ayes. 1567. Um, this one, I think. Instead of holding, we should refer to the special uh, to the finance committee. I'd like to make a motion, Alderman Ryan. I'd love to, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, make a motion to refer this back to the finance committee. All right. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1568 lies over. 1569 and 1570 to be referred. Matters laid over. 11, resolu uh, 1433, resolution number 1250708 by all the persons Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriation for meat library vacation and sick leave severance from vacation and sick leave from reserves. Establish and review and appropriations for the internal committee public relations. Establish and revenue and appropriations for contributions for Independence Day celebration. And establish and revenue and appropriation for funds received from federal, federal drug forfeitures. Wow, that's a mouthful. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a lot easier. Uh, I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? 
Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1448 RC number 22. 2220708 by the Special Committee on Risk Management submitted a claim from Brian and Laura Bauman for alleged damages to their vehicle when a city garbage truck site swiped vehicle and recommended paying the claim in the amount of $907.15. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rin Fleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Anna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1571, lies over to November 26. Other matters, Attorney McLean? 1572 is an RO by the Board of Waterworks Commissioners regarding uh, uh, an update on its April submittal. That will be referred to finance. 1573 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Dr. Elizabeth Stroot requesting an, an encroachment at 2010 South 9th Street for the purpose of building and maintaining a retaining wall. That will go to City Plan Commission. 1574 is an ordinance granting Elizabeth Stroot, her heirs and assigns, the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of South 9th Street. That will be referred to City Plan Commission also. 1575 is an ordinance granting Elizabeth Stroot, her heirs and assigns, the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of South 9th Street for that different will... purposes than the prior documents. I'm sorry, excuse me. That will also be referred to City Plan. 1576 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from David Lutsky requesting an encroachment for the purpose of building and maintaining a chain link fence. That would also go to City Plan Commission. 1577 is an ordinance granting David Lutsky as heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching bond described portions of North 2nd Street and Lincoln Avenue uh, for the purpose of building and maintaining a chain link fence. And that goes to City Plan also. 1578 is a committee report by the Municipal Court Advisory Committee. Uh, submitting the monthly uh, financial report. And that lies over. 1579 is a resolution authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. That will be referred to finance. Need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>